I just won't give it to the school and not have any taxes paid on it at all. So does anybody want to take me up on this offer? I don't see everybody jumping up and down to say, okay, Mr. Schaefer, we'll take your property. I gotta do something to get my taxes done. I cannot continue to afford it. This man's I don't know honest. how you're going to continue to do this. Somebody's going to have to change things in Harrisburg somehow. That's exactly right. And it's the only way to do that is to vote, just like they did in Britain. They wanted independence. I want my property without having to pay a ransom to keep it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Take me up on the offer, please. Is there anyone else? I think it's time <coughs> for zero tax increase. For once. It's been a long time since I've ever seen that. It's, it I, hasn't been, excuse me, it hasn't been a long time. We've done it a couple of times in, in the 14 years that I've been on the board. And the consequences <coughs> to doing that were, were substantial increases the following couple of years. Well, you've been doing you're going to have cons to cut, 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 and cut so you can get to what is coming in, or live on what's coming in. But what, what do you suggest cutting? Just, just I, as I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? There has to be a way to no. shave it. There has I to be know. somewhere. I wish we I had the answer. answer. Well, we, we have a Frisbee team. Who needs a Frisbee team? I understand. I school teachers. Well, then the school teachers. The pension system alone was the sole single reason for the tax increase this year. We have $520,000 in additional money that's mandated to go to the PCERS retirement fund. And the 2.4% tax increase that's proposed is $520,000. It's something we don't have any control of that expense. We don't have any control of $1.25 million per year for 89 kids to stay at home and be cyber school. We have no control of that. That's a new, relatively new law in the last 10 years. Um, we don't have any control of, of um, special education expenses. They're fed, it's a federally mandated program, and if somebody has an IEP and a special need, you know, that number is a special ed budget. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's in the millions. Um, and and you know, those are the most needy kids. The, the lion's share of what we can control with our budget uh, is is less than a million dollars. So, I mean, if, 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 you know, and within reason, I mean, yes, we could cut transportation and have everybody drive their kids from, you know, Pocono Springs to school or, or from, you know, uh, north of Waymark to school, but I, we don't think that's a, a reasonable thing. Um, you know, the, the reality is, the, the, the pension system alone and the lack of funding coming from the state and federal government going from you know 50 to 42 and now it's down to 33 percent of our budget uh, and all of the mandates and stayed and more got piled on so you know if, if we if we don't follow the mandates we lose the funding if we don't if we follow the mandates the expenditures go higher and and that's a catch-22 believe me nobody wants to raise anybody's taxes nobody. Um, but but the, the reality is, you know, there is a balance uh, in society that uh, it's been ongoing for the last, you know, 200 years in our country, is public education is a, is a staple of, of, of educating the next generation so that they can become employable uh, and, 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 and then they can be the next generation of ongoing taxpayers. And in our generation, I'm 54 years old, you know, most people did better than their parents, and then the parent, and before that, the generation, most people had an opportunity to do better than their parents. It's changed dramatically with globalization, but the reality is it, it makes education even more valuable than it's ever been, because if, if you can't achieve at, at high, high levels, you're not going to be able to get a job and be competitive. And then all of us as a society will pay way, way more in our percentage of income to taxes because of having to support people who don't have jobs, uh, who, who uh, aren't capable of getting a job and covering their health care and, and everything else. I mean, our, our democracy and our country's system has been built on an educated workforce 
that's been primarily educated through the public school system. It has become more expensive and it has become less funded by state and federal governments. Um, and we're dealing with the reality of, of having no sources of our, of our revenue stream have any application to, to inflation because the tax base, you know, nobody's building a new house. I mean, we had, we had the equivalent of two new houses built in the, in the school district last year from an assessment standpoint. There's no revenue stream that's going up in, in expense. And again, like I said, our PCERS, uh, Pennsylvania School Employee Retirement System contribution went up by over $500,000. Totally out of our control. There's the 2.4% tax increase. Now next year, it's, it, it flattens out at levels, and it hopefully is only going to go up you know, a few thousand dollars. Um, and that peaks, and then, and then for years after that, it starts to go down. Uh, but you know that took 15 years to blow up. Uh, that started in the year 2000, and now it's now it's you know it's it's hit it its highest point as a negative as far as what it does to the school budgets and, and tax rates. I mean, all other school districts in the area, uh, with the exception of one, are having 2.4 to 13 percent tax increases. You know, so and all of them are are solely due to mandates and having no revenue stream to be able to pay for the mandates. It is a severe problem, and we have you know tremendous sympathy for people who who are struggling to pay their taxes, and it's everybody. You know, there's there's nobody that wants to pay more, and nobody wants to raise taxes. We all understand that, but you know, from an overall standpoint, from a from a from a fiscal responsibility and a society responsibility. You know, how do we compete? How do we provide opportunities for our kids to compete in the global market to, to earn a living so that, that the next generation will continue to have opportunities to work so that they can pay into Social Security, which will pay the generation before them? I mean, it's, it's a severe problem. We all, we all understand that, and we are very sympathetic, and none of us are happy about having to raise taxes. It's the reality of where we are. Roger. Is it true, or I'm not a numbers man by any means in that respect, uh, you say the charter schools cost so much. Doesn't it cost less per child in a charter school than it does in a public school? If those we'll say $18,000, $20,000 per student in Western Wayne, right. and we'll say 18000 for a charter school. Right. right. Why is it you say that it costs so much for a well, charter school? It's you, actually if, costing if, the taxpayers less. No, if, if you can't, if, if, it's those, only if those 89 people came back spread out over 12 grade levels or 13 grade levels, we wouldn't have any more additional expenditures because all yes, it would, would do is, to... no, no, just let me finish. And what you would do, if you had 89 kids divided by, by 12 classes, by 12, 12 total sections, three or four kids more for every, for every grade level or five kids more for every grade level, would not require us to hire a new teacher, would not require us for any new benefits, would not require us to have any more um, technology or transportation. It would be absorbed into the existing system. Now, if it were hundreds and hundreds of kids, and it would require us to build a building and hire more teachers, the reality is, if we brought all 89 back, it would not affect, it would affect our bottom line by reducing the outlay to the, to the, to the, to the, to the cyber charters, and it would not increase our expenditures because it could be a, you know, you're, you're only talking, you know, six kids, six kids. But if our kids went to the charter school, it would cost two thousand dollars less per child. Well, because they're yeah. what? What does a charter? A charter school has no, and that's not driven by the charter. It's driven by the law. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is if it's twenty thousand dollars per, per pupil, child, it's a per pupil rate. Yeah, and if it's eighteen for a charter and it's right. twenty for Western Wayne, right. wouldn't it be cheaper to put them all in charter school than it would be in Western Wayne? If all of them went. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent are not going to go. Hypothetically. But then we would lose. But work. then we would also lose all reimbursement. So all state reimbursement per child that we get would go away. That's about three thousand thirty seven hundred dollars a kid. So that would go away. Student transportation reimbursement, which is about three million, would go away. So net net it would cost us certainly cost us more. And we'd have, you know, we would have buildings that would still have to be occupied. Be, you know, the lights would have to be on the air the they would. You know, well, if there's would. nobody here, if there's nobody home, why is the lights on? Well you, know, yes. for, you, you can't just abandon something. Completely. But but the but the reality is, is is if you bring those kids back, the expense goes away, and we have no new additional expense because you would distribute you know one kid per classroom um, at the elementary level you know which could easily be absorbed uh, in the class sizes so there wouldn't be any new 
expenses. That's why, and, and that started out at a low number and it grew to 89 people. That's one of the things that we're doing tonight is to try to bring those kids back um, because it, it's an opportunity for us to save a substantial amount of money. <coughs> and when the, when, well, the other thing that happens in the cyber school, when people do go to cyber and they want to come back, you know, they haven't, they're not, they're, they haven't been working hard at it and, they have, and they're unprepared and they come back at a much lesser grade level than they should have been um, and so we have to remediate to get them to, to, to catch to catch them back up. And the, again, the reality of that, you know, there are some some people that it's you know for religious purposes or for uh, social reasons or whatever, you know, understandable. But but you know the, the the you know being able just to go to cyber school to stay at home um, and and to, you know go through school on, on on a computer and have the school district pay either twelve or twenty four thousand dollars depending on whether it's a special ed or a regular ed kit. You know, our cyber school costs internally is about six thousand dollars. We have our own cyber school, so if you bring them back, instead of paying twenty-four or twelve or twelve thousand or twenty-four, we would we would absorb a cost of six if we kept them in the cyber system that's already here. If they came back into the regular ed system, there'd be no new expense and it'd be all savings. Dr. Johnson, I just wanted to mention because usually I provide the videos on YouTube. My system crashed. So I have 12 videos now that I have saved in the camera. It's going to be loaded into the new computer. The Geek Squad promises me it won't crash again. And I will get them all on board. And probably one of the latest ones that I really wanted to have ready for this discussion was the work session where you had talked about what are we going to do through Harrisburg because they keep handing us their problems and asking us to pay for them. And they put you guys in the firing line, and they're standing behind, handing you more bills. We were talking about what you had suggested that we could do. I was wondering if you could briefly mention that again, since I could not do it on YouTube like I sure, normally we're, would. We're, we're intending to try to get the legislators and they, you know, who represent our district together at a night meeting to, to discuss educational issues, including you know, number one, finance. And how do we? How can we? You know, how can we? Continue to operate uh, financially as a, as a public school district, and and have our you know you know that's the single biggest lack of, of revenue that and, and lack of change over the last well it started in 1988 it, it, it's, it's been declining on a regular basis ever since um, and you know so that's something that we're we're trying to get together with our legislators to have a, a an evening meeting with local school districts uh, combined so that we. Because many of them represent multiple school districts, uh, to have an open forum about about you know what we can do uh, to relieve the tax burden on the local real estate um, marketplace uh, and local real estate taxes for our residents uh, because of the, the lack of state support that's been ongoing for the last you know, almost 30 years, and it, it continually declines. So that was something that we that we had spoken. About. Was there any? Did I see your hand? No, no more hands. Okay. He's scratching his chest. <laughs> okay. I wanted to mention something, Ms. Herman. Uh, yes. You mentioned a couple times about Pocono Mountain and weighing off 70 teachers, and they had they were being irresponsible and so on. I no, they were being responsible because by, by the, because of the per capita yes. median income, right. they couldn't tax think, people any higher, and so they had there, to cut their budget. What actually happened there was they had a precipitous drop in the student population, and they closed a couple of schools. The buildings were actually closed, so it really People the reason people lost their homes yes, because of the, the reason, taxes. The reason like, I have family down there. Yeah. I know what happened. I understand. The, the reason, of course, that they they had to lay off teachers is because they didn't have the students. And a lot of people, I understand, moved back to New Jersey and New York after the 2008 uh, debacle. Couldn't so, afford the school tax. At any rate, well, they were walking away from their houses because of the taxes. Well, Which is what's been, been, what's, it we can't, of you're killing us here. here. We can't even but sell our wanted, house. I just wanted to point out that it really wasn't because they were being irresponsible. It was because they were being They were being extremely responsible. They cut their budget. That was extremely yeah. responsible. Because they couldn't go any higher, they cut their budget. Well, implied, That's what we're yeah, asking you, you to do. They were being there has to be a ceiling. They were responsible, but I don't think it was because of that. It was because of the precipitous drop in their student population. Is, is our attention span? I have a question. 